Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video. Myself and Marcel, now I know it's been a little while since you've heard from me. I've been fine. Mostly just fucking on the editing in the background as we've had an absolute ton of stuff to review. So I've been a busy little bee just uh, in the background. But Paul is away today visiting a friend who is over from Norway. So falls to me, I'm afraid, my friends. But I have some exciting stuff for you today. And the first thing is going to be something from NVIDIA. Now, I just want to say, first of all, that Paul will be covering this topic in more detail. He's going to be doing his usual analysis. But I'm just here to report that this is a thing that exists. And Paul will be here tomorrow to tell you more about it. So, what's actually happening? Now, of course, NVIDIA are very keen on AI. They've been very pushing deep learning and that sort of thing. And we have something in that similar vein as researchers from the University of South Carolina have basically found that use of AI in powering a new level of realistic and lifelike hair models could basically mean that we could be seeing similar technology in next-gen hair works. So basically, long story short, this is an AI-powered rendering method which could be used for hair and, of course, foliage as well. So how does it actually work, I hear you cry? Well, basically, the 3D models are referenced from a 2D image and work in real time, which, well, goes without saying, is rather impressive. Now, I just want to say off the bat that this report does come to us thanks to PC Games N. There is, of course, going to be a link in the description below this video to their report. If you want to go give it a look, say I would recommend it. So I actually have a quote from that said report. So buckle in as we've got a bit of a long one here. It says, realistic hair modeling is one of the most difficult tasks when digitizing virtual humans. In contrast to objects that are easily paramentizable, like the human face, hair spans a wide range of shape variations and can be highly complex due to its volumetric structure and level of deformability in each strand. A deep learning approach, in contrast, is highly efficient in storage and can run 1,000 times faster while generating hair with 30k strands. The convolutional neural network takes the 2D orientation field of a hair image as input and generates strand features that are evenly distributed on a paramentized 2D scalp. We introduce a collision loss to synthesize more plausible hairstyles and the visibility of each strand is also used as a weight term to improve the reconstruction accuracy. The hair from our method can preserve better local details and looks more natural, especially for curly hair. Now, obviously, we have seen with things such as hair works and, of course, on AMD side, Tress effects that rendering hair realistically can be very demanding. But basically, these researchers, excuse me, are saying that they believe AI can help take on this load. Now, in this particular case that is detailed in the report, the network was given a set of data of 40,000 different hairstyles with a total of 160,000 2D orientation images. In just a couple of milliseconds, not seconds, milliseconds, it was able to create hair rendered in 3D and it was in different styles, colours and lengths. Now, the devs have been very open about the fact that it is not perfect at the moment, that is why it's obviously a research thing that is ongoing, but the results are quite promising so far. So basically, they're going to be making use of AI to help render, and I'm definitely going to be keeping my eyes peeled on this one. And of course, we'll be seeing Paul's video tomorrow when I edit it, most likely, on his thoughts on this. So do stay tuned for that, but I am definitely intrigued. Now, obviously, the question is, are we actually going to see this anytime soon? Well, it's really hard to say, but given that it is still in the research phase, I do think it's a ways off, but it is looking really promising. Now, I would be surprised if we don't see improvements in hair work and game works from NVIDIA and of course Tress effects for AMD but I'm just tingling at the possibilities you know imagine something like this in the future say the next generation after touring or the 1180 or whatever you want to call it having something like this in combination with ray tracing or whatever new technologies around at the time you know we don't know what innovations are going to happen until they actually happen obviously unless you're researching it yourself but last I checked I'm not a researcher I mean I don't think I am <laughs> Regardless, I am definitely going to be keeping a close eye on this one. So we're going to move over to our next topic. Now our second topic is from AMD as we have yet more leaks from Team Red as the Ryzen 7 2700E 8-core and the Ryzen 5 2600E 6-core have been leaked. 
Now, for those of you wondering what these are actually targeting, it's going to be the Intel Core T series processors, which of course are fairly low in the demand when it comes to the wattage required. But what about the actual specs? Well, the Ryzen 7 2700E is a low power variant of the current flagship, which of course is the Ryzen 7 2700X. And you're going, okay, okay, that's all pretty and everything, but what about the actual specs? What about the power? The Ryzen 7 2700E is going to be the low power variant of the current flagship, which of course, without me telling you, you know, is the Ryzen 7 2700X. But what about the actual specs? Well, we have an 8 core 16 thread part with 16 megabytes of L3 cache and 4 megabytes of L2. It is going to be rated for 45 watts and we also have the clock speeds for you as well. We've got a base clock of 2.7 GHz, and you may recall, for those of you sharp in memory, that this is a 1.1 GHz slower than the 2700X. Unfortunately, we don't know the boost clocks, which is a bit of a bummer. However, we do know a fair bit about the Ryzen 5 2600E, which, as you probably guessed, is the low power variant of the Ryzen 5 2600X. As for the specs of this one, it is a 6 core 12 thread parts with 16 megs of L3 cache and 3 megs of L2. And the base frequency is going to be 3.1 gigahertz. So basically, we've got a fairly nice suite of low power CPUs coming out soon from AMD, which will probably be paired quite nicely with their B450 series. I'll be very surprised not to see that all over the marketing material. So if you're looking for a lower power bill, something that's not going to suck up all the electricity like a thirsty vampire, then these might definitely be worth something keeping in mind. And finally, we're going to finish things up with a little bit of gaming news, as I do tend to do, a little bit of sprinkle in there, but a little bit of flavour, as we have some more news regarding Resident Evil 2. Sadly, nothing world changing, of course. We had a fairly nice reveal at E3. We do know when the game is coming out, and it's not that far away, thankfully. I am very excited about that one. Resident Evil 2 is definitely up there in my favourite Resident Evils, and is just one of my favourite PS1 games, period. So I'm very, very hyped to see what that is looking like and from what i saw of the gameplay it's looking promising but what do we have for you well basically what we have is of course news is coming out about the upcoming san diego comic-con and one of the things we will be seeing there is of course the resident evil 2 remake according to an official post on their website that being san diego comic-con of course so there's going to be a panel as well with the producer Yoshiaki Hirabashi and of course other team members as well and they're going to be discussing how they're actually going to be handling the remake which of course is going to be a topic of much scrutiny. I do have a bit of a statement here, well statement isn't really the right word, more of a blurb I guess, but we do have a bit of a statement here regarding what we're actually going to be hearing at Comic Con. So strap in as we have quote you have once again into the world of survival horror Woo. here the producer yoshiaki hirabashi and staff of the recently announced resident evil 2 on how capcom reinvented a celebrated classic 20 years later get an exclusive behind the scenes look at leon kennedy claire redfield the raccoon city outbreak and a few other surprises you won't want to miss cosplay is encouraged so not really anything world ending there, as I already said, just basically, hey, we're going to be at Comic-Con, we're going to have a panel, we're going to talk about how we've actually handled this, because I am sure they are very, very aware that all eyes are going to be on them for this, you know, fans are going to be looking at this with a magnifying glass and are going to be holding this up to quite a high standards, and well, rightfully so, to be honest, because as I said, Resident Evil 2 is a classic and rightfully so but as i said the gameplay they showed us did look really really promising so i'm definitely excited to see and obviously i won't be at san diego comic-con myself because well that's a bit far I can't exactly walk down there can i well i, I guess i technically could but I, the ocean might be an issue i don't know anyway regardless of that while i won't be there i'll most likely be watching the panels of shimmy i'll put up on youtube or twitch because i'm definitely curious to see what they have to say regarding this but that is me done for this video thank you very much for watching hope you have enjoyed enjoyed as i said normal program will resume tomorrow paul is going to be back at the helm and i'll see you then bye